Hello and welcome back here in our Isomar TV studio downstairs at the exhibition floor. During the next coffee break, we're going to talk about cross-media measurement. Is it truly the holy grail? Is it going to solve all our problems? Well, more about that soon. As you can see, I'm uh, back uh, at the, the social media desk of Good Marcel afternoon. van Overveld. Thank you. Marcel, during the debate that I'm going to have in the next 20 minutes or so, yep. our viewers can actually participate. That's, How does that work? Yeah, that's totally correct. Uh, the viewers can, uh, our viewers can uh, participate uh, through the interactive panel uh, below uh, the player and on channel 3, I might add where you can participate in a poll. It's actually an open question. And do send your thoughts this way so we can debate and discuss your views as a viewer. Yeah. So uh, go ahead and or, surprise or us. if you see one of our panelists say something and you really want to ask them something or challenge them, Definitely. just type it in and you will see it and interrupt us on the flow, right? Yeah, totally. Uh, like like uh, Mariana Cara. Uh, thank you, Mariana, for uh, one of our loyal viewers. Uh, she cannot wait for uh, the debate to start, so I would say... Let's get started. Let's get started. And with that, I'm walking over to my panel, who are sitting here diligently. As you can see, perhaps there's an empty seat. Shoot Kornstra, who's going to be sitting there from Heineken International, we learned is just coming out of a press conference. So perhaps he has an interesting uh, scoop. On my far left, your right, we have uh, Christian Kugel from uh, AOL here uh, with us. Next to him is Christian Kurz from Viacom. And on my right, your left, is uh, Graeme Lawrence from uh, the research agency Join the Dots, right? Welcome, all of you. Um, we want to talk for the next 20 minutes about, uh, or so about the biggest challenge that the media industry is facing. And uh, obviously, we've been chatting a bit on beforehand. You've, you've, you've had a chance to give that some thought. Christian, if I would ask that to you, what do you say is the biggest challenge the media industry is facing at the moment? Well, I mean, speaking from my own company, AOL, we're a purely digital company. And what's happened is, audiences have become dis disconnected from content. And historically, publishers create content, advertisers pay to underwrite that content by getting access to those audiences. But with the shift to programmatic, that connection is fundamentally shifted. And now you can buy audiences independent of content. So that really changes the, the economics of how you create world-class content. All of the great journalism that needs to happen in order to have government oversight and those sorts of things. And we estimate that around 55 to 75 percent of all digital uh, dollars spent programmatically goes to what we call a tech tax, which is basically all of the technology that enables targeting, verification, demographic measurement, and those sorts of things. And that means that as little as 25 percent of every budget that's spent programmatically actually goes to the publisher and the publisher is the one who's ultimately attracting the audience. So it's really starting to change the way that economics of publishing and content occur, and that's something that's still working itself out. And, and you say the challenge there is how can that publisher still stay in business yeah. if his budget is that right. much diverted? How can, how can the economics of content still make sense given the fact that audiences and content have become separated? All right, thank you. Hold that thought. By the way, Shoot Kornstra, welcome, Heineken International. You've, you've, you've moved into the set. Welcome. We understood and, and shared with our viewers. You just come from a press conference. Any hot news you want to share with our viewers? Any hot news? Well, the, the press conference probably was a scoop, right? Yeah, that went well. Sorry. Oh, it went well. All right. Well, well uh, uh, take your time to find a seat. Let, let's continue. Um, Christian, what would you say is, is the biggest challenge? Would, would you add to that or, or would you go a different way? Yeah, I think adding to that, the interesting thing is that um, there's more content out there than there's ever been before. Um, if you ask the audience, there's better content out there than there's ever been before. Business models are being challenged and that, it's not the first time that's happened. It's happened time and time again. So what the interesting thing is that we're seeing a lot of consumption and a lot of that is unmeasured and therefore not monetized. And adding to that point, I think that adds the value. And obviously, the subject of the conversation is cross-media ma measurement. And I do think that comes down, that is the crux of what we're talking about. And how can that be addressed? How can that be solved to figure out what the economic model is going to look like in the future? Because you're saying if we can't measure it, we can't monetize, and the, the model is And doomed. then it's not going to be made eventually. Exactly. All right. Well, on my right, Graeme, from a, a research agency perspective, do you agree? Do you have another opinion? What would you say is the, the greatest challenge facing the media industry? 
I mean, I think from a research agency perspective, all the things that the guys are talking about here is making it really, really try tricky. It's certainly in the primary research industry to know how to ask the questions that are going to get to the bottom of that, that information. I think from a sort of secondary uh, research basis, we're really, really data, uh, data rich. But I think the thing is that's so hard about it is to become sort of uh, insight rich. Uh, you know, this disintermediation of all the different content. How, does, how do you actually talk to consumers and, uh, and to, to people? Let's call them people. How do we talk to them? and actually understand uh, what's going on in terms of their media consumption and, and whether that's staying with them and what the impact are. And as, you know, as, as the Christians are saying, this just, just kind of really rips up the business models that we're used to working with across our different spheres. And, and we heard this quote before, even in the studio, we're, we're data rich and insight poor. I think that's a, that's a theme running through the ESMR Congress and the ESMR Association. Can you specifically apply that to, to the cross-media measurement environment? How, 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 that, how do you see that? Like, we're collecting data, but it doesn't give us the insights. I think... <laughs> I think a simple way to explain it is the fact is we've, we've got a number of different silos and, and a, a, a vast variety of data sets, whether that be the passive data sets or the primary research survey data sets. And we were just discussing with the guys before we came on air. I mean, which of these sets do you believe sometimes? You know, it's how, how's it been gathered? How's it been captured? Is it, is it, if a question's been asked, has it been asked in the right way? We're hearing a lot in the conference around emotional measurement of advertising and how important that is and how it's more important than it's ever been before. Well, how do we capture that uh, and, and and when you've got so much, such a sort of vast variety of different uh, different metrics and a vast variety of different touch points it just makes it really quite baffling I think but is it isn't that what this association what ASMR is is all about actually making sure that that is done in a correct and a valid way isn't this just yeah, I mean, the, the industry's got a big part to play uh, in, in, you know, in the validity and the robustness of the way that we go about things, un undoubtedly. But I guess the proliferated world makes that all the more hard, you know, because, you know, this organization can't keep tabs on everything that's going on in the world that these guys are in. Um, so it's, it's tricky, yeah. You're, you're nodding heavily, uh, Christian? Well, yeah, I mean, I think uh, SMR as an organization is an important stakeholder and represents an important stakeholder group. But there are many others that, you know, I work with in, in my function including the IAB, which sets a lot of these standards, the MRC, which audits a lot of the methodologies, the ARF. So, you know, I think the challenge is, just as we've seen media fragment to a certain degree, voices that um, contribute knowledge to this space are also fragmented, and harmonizing all of that together isn't exactly the easiest thing to do. So, it's very organic, especially now because um, the rate of consumer adoption of new ways of consuming content new technologies continues to increase and probably outpaces the challenges that you know we've we've solved from a measurement perspective yeah yeah i would add to that i keep adding to what you're saying today i also think that in a lot of the silos what's missing is transparency because if you're not entirely sure what is being measured here and therefore what is being reported there then there's no way you can add it together with anything else, but also it makes it really hard to understand then and to charge a fair value for that. Yeah, and I think the most practical example is that, for example, is all the fuzz about video views on either Facebook and YouTube, right? That's the most daring example of you, whether it counts after 30 seconds, three seconds, out of play, yeah. right? And, and what that adds is that an impact, an advertising impact, is not equal to another advertising impact. Because you compare very extreme, a television spot, which is 30 seconds, full screen at the full attention field, and you compare that with an ad that may be running for three seconds in a window hidden behind something else, and then you press the skip button. Yeah. And that's clearly two very different things. And the client still, but yeah. My counterpoint to that is, and we did some research earlier this year that looked at attention as a measure for video across different screens, because Nielsen and anybody who basically does currency measurement for TV measures opportunity to see. But what's changed in the last, let's say, five or six years with the way that people watch TV is what do we all have now in our hands while we're on our couch? Usually it's a mobile device, a phone, a tablet, or something like that. And the reality is people cannot pay attention to that screen and this screen at the same time. That degraded attention affects advertising. Yeah. And so I think even the, the measures that we're probably comfortable with, like TV, in that, in that environment alone isn't sufficient because consumer behavior has evolved to the degree that advertisers aren't getting the entire opportunity to see. They're getting some fraction of that because of degraded attention. Yeah, so you're saying we still might be able to measure TV, but the, uh, the, the way 
TV is consumed has changed so dramatically right. and, you know, that the number doesn't mean the same thing. Let, let, let's go to a client for a second because, shoot, in the end, you're paying for the stuff. And, and, yes, what, and you uh, are what, what we have seen uh, the last years is that instead of uh, having, in the past, the uh, company was making a commercial and then it was somewhat supported by other uh, media. Currently, we are building a story. Yeah, we also don't mention call anymore our communication evaluation monitoring. Uh, that way we call it a storytelling tracker. It means we, are, we want to convey a story to consumers. And uh, we want also, we are, for that we are using several touch points. And we want to measure the impact of each touch point. Uh, what we see now currently happening, and for this we are then paying, one we're paying touch points where we are uh, <coughs> publishing. Uh, as well as um, of the media buyers, we are paying a lot. And, uh, and we are also paying uh, research agencies to evaluate. What we see uh, recently happening, especially in the States, is that all these digital channels, they are also doing their own performance measurements. They are making big, big, big deals with uh, our research agencies. Uh, these, all these evaluations are going less depth than uh, we are measuring because they are, they are till, uh, cause one side we want to measure what is the impact on, uh, of, an, uh, of an ad. Have people seen it? Some general, uh, general metrics. We also want to know, is it adding, is it doing something? for our brands. We want to know, has a message been conveyed? So what we are confronted with is the following, is that we are receiving reports from these agencies who have made a deal, for example, with Facebook and YouTube and Twitter. Uh, we are, uh, the, the measurement is done superficial. We do only know to, till a certain limited level that if our hour of that activity in the typical digital um, channel has been effective, and that's one. And secondly, we are also confronted with the fact that our research agency is blocked off of using these digital channels to measure our cross media for which we are also paying. Okay, let's validate. At AOL, do you guys give a lot of analytics to your advertisers? Well, we do. Um, and a big part of that is around attention and delivery of attention. But we also, about a year or so ago, acquired a company called Convertro, which does multi-touch attribution. So basically, taking all of the great touch points that you're talking about, and through machine learning of big data sets, um, essentially calculating coefficients for the effectiveness of each of those. So we're a big believer in what you're talking about, so much so that we went and acquired a company. And, and, and how open is then your data set to companies like Ramus or the cl end client itself? Are you well, opening up? So Convertro works for clients, just as any research agency would. Okay, so, so you don't entirely, at least for your company, you don't recognize what you're saying here. Well, I understand the point, but yeah. I'm saying it, it's, uh, we've understood apply. it so much that we've tried to address that. I think if, uh, if the, the sort of research in the agency side of it is honest with itself as well, that we we've never actually necessarily been the best at interpreting some of these data sets. And as there's more of them out there, how we kind of bring that together and aggregate it to give, you know, give these guys the answer, I'm not sure, sure we've necessarily been the best at playing that role as the aggregators. And as, if, as you get more of this data overall, and it's forever has been thus really, but as you get more of this information, it's, it's all the harder for a research agency to do that because research agencies are, are, are training their guys to ask questions effectively. They're training them how to, to uh, construct questionnaires. They've not necessarily got the, the, the mindset to work with big, big data sets that maybe aren't as linear as research is in terms of the research that they're producing. So it's a tricky one on that, on that front. I think we need to collaborate better across different fields, really. All right. That's a really good keyword, it's the collaboration. If we need transparency, we need collaboration, and then we need to figure out how do we get the skill sets into the industry that are out there somewhere, but not necessarily in the right places. So, so to wrap up, because we already heard the bell, right? And the other rooms are starting up, and it's, it's a pity because it's, it's just starting to become interesting. But um, we might have a global audience of thousands at the moment, and if we don't have them right now, they might come in the recording. So let's take this opportunity and actually try to move it one step further. If, if you could take this camera and tell our viewers one thing you would like them to do in transparency collaboration, what's, what's the first thing? Let's start with you, Christian. What is the first thing that you want the re market research industry to actually change tomorrow? 
You know, I wish that, so first of all, to build on your point, I, I wish that more market research agencies would reach out to us. Because to your point, Christian, about collaboration, we're open. We have an open ecosystem. I would love to be able to do that. It doesn't happen enough. So I would say just reach out and ask. Yeah. Wow. Nice one. Very practical. I'll do that tomorrow. And I would add to that, just even be open to a lot more collaboration with each other as well. We see challenges in the measurement that cannot be overcome by anybody individually. Um, so think about it as an open environment because only together are we going to ever solve this. Wow. Wow. That's a beautiful message. Kramer. Uh, I think I would wrap it up by saying don't forget the why as well. I think there's so much work has done on measurement that kind of can, leaves that out of the equation. Uh, so I think don't uh, feel that just because you've got a score or a measure or an aggregated index that that's providing you the answers. We're, uh, we're importantly got to think about the why here as well. All right, yeah. cool. And shoot. Yeah, for me, it's about transparency and adding to this also that we need to understand if we have consumers and why and overall digital uh, channels. And that means that uh, companies like Facebook, and Twitter, etc., they should become transparent uh, regarding reach and uh, collaborating uh, with research agencies who are doing the work for us. Well, let's hope with that, if you're watching, that we can actually make a dent in the universe by uh, actually uh, getting these quotes out of these uh, guys. The three of you will be uh, back on Channel 1 tomorrow morning, right, talking about the uh, development screen. You'll be going up to Room 1 at the moment. So uh, if you want to hear more from Christian, make sure you switch to Channel 1. And with that, we come to the end of this very interesting panel discussion about cross-media measurement. And just because we know that uh, they haven't started yet uh, above in the room, I, th I thought, let's have a look around the exhibition. Let's go this way, see if we can get there. Because here behind me, what you see in the backdrop all the time, is something we call our Isomar Speaker Lounge. And I guess here are some of our speakers. Hello, good morning. Hi. What's your name and where are you from? Uh, I'm Jasper Scher, I'm um, from uh, Haystack International, Belgium. Haystack International. Have you just been on stage speaking or what brings you to the coffee corner? My colleague, uh, Ludovic, was the speaker. <laughs> Ludovic, what, would, uh, what were you speaking about? We were uh, presenting together with Heineken on the impact of testing, um, like sensory testing, we did taste testing um, with them, and the impact of whether you test uh, in a central location compared to a bar setting, for instance. How is this influencing the results? All right. And, and can you explain to our viewers a little bit what it's like to be here in Dublin at this Isomar conference? What is? What is it like to be here? To describe the atmosphere a bit. They only see you, you on stage or us in the studio. Well, as always, Isomar is the, the place to be, the yearly, um, the yearly uh, gathering of all the, of all the researchers uh, worldwide. And the reason I am here uh, is mainly to get the latest trends and uh, see the people and see what's going on in the industry. And then uh, with that inspiration, go back to uh, headquarters and um, make our strategy for next year. Make a dent in the universe. Well, thank you very much. Thanks for talking to us. Because I see over my shoulder, you see, you see an audience question? I have here a question to Mr. Bacon. Oh, to Mr. Bacon. Well, come on. He's here in the speaker lounge. Mr. David Bacon, we've seen you before pitching yes, in the break. So um, people have been watching your talk on Channel One right. and they have a question. Question. They're curious. Um, I am curious. Does he see an application of the Bayesian truth serum into market research? Well, yes, I do. Um, the Bayesian truth serum basically um, you tell somebody that you can tell whether or not they're lying, and then you ask them a question. And so you can um, put into a survey, you know, something that says you'll be able to match their data to something else to verify their data. And that is to encourage them to be more truthful by creating an expectation that they will, um, you know, that you'll find them out if they... Let, let's be exactly here. Do I apply this in my design of my survey or in my, uh, in my analysis? No, it's in the design of the survey. It's There's something the you tell the respondent. Okay, well, interesting. Well, I hope that answers your question. And this is how it works, right? We really need to celebrate because yes. it's our first live viewer question that we got. If you're wa still watching, perhaps you already moved up to uh, Channel 1. But if you're still watching, David is here. I see a lot of the other speakers here. So um, keep them coming. Marcel will jump in. Thank you very much, David. I see something else. Let's see if we can get there. Can you, can, can you see this? What is happening over here? Look, this is uh, Cyril Kortelev. He's actually one of the keynote speakers tomorrow. And he is uh, uh, creating a 
Cyril, what are you doing? This is already a preview because we're going to do this tomorrow, but I need some crazy guys so I can integrate it in my slides. And tomorrow, people can show that they are really a proud Mark researcher. So it's still a bit underground, but now it's... Okay, it's a, it's a scoop. It's live on Channel 3. So this is funny. We see one of our speakers actually preparing one of his talks tomorrow. Can you, uh, can you explain a little bit to us what, what might happen? Because you're on at 3 o'clock, I think, something like that. It's 2.45. 2.45. What are you going to do with us? It's still a secret, but what we're going to do, sometimes you say that Mark researchers, their image is a bit boring. So for that, we made this frame. I'm a proud Mark researcher. And people can come up with what's your own word. So for Patricio, it's I'm punk. You know, he's going for punk. He already have some creative people. He already have somebody who's sexy. So tomorrow, we're going to challenge people to write down their own word and make some crazy pictures. If half of the group is doing this, then we will be trending topic in Ireland and probably all over Europe. Wow, exciting. So uh, if you're watching us right now, make sure you tune in tomorrow, 2.45. I think you're on Channel 1, Plenary, right? Perfect. So uh, and, and perhaps you can start to be creative in your own home or office and also be a proud marketeer tomorrow, right? That's the plan. We want the whole world to be creative and a proud market researcher. Perfect. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. Well, let's see if we see something else interesting. I just saw a lot of Guinness going by, but uh, I can't find that. Oh, they're here. Can you get there? Look here behind the scenes taking selfies with Guinness. Can we get that or is the cable gone? Look, this is nice. Eh? This is why you should get to Ireland. Ladies, ladies, can you join me for a bit? You're live on Channel 3. And that's not BBC Channel 3, it's just uh, SMR TV Channel 3. I see uh, you found a typical Irish treat. We did. What does it taste like? Is it your first? It's not my first and it won't be my last. <laughs> so Sarah, wh what brings you to Dublin here? Uh, we came to Dublin, first just to attend the SMR conference, and second, uh, Justin and I presented in one of the tracks earlier today, Blending Data. Okay, that was in room one, I think? Room two. Room two. So perhaps some of our viewers have seen you. If you have a question to Sarah, you should definitely post it now. Um, last question, what are, you, what are your plans for the rest of the conference? Uh, well, we intend to have a good time in the evenings and learn lots during the day. Thank you very much. Enjoy the beer. Cheers. Okay, with that, we go back to... Let's see if we, anything else is happening. Guys, if you want me to go somewhere, make sure you tweet it out. Uh, hashtag Isamar TV. We can make this a little interactive. Here, here's another important feature in this conference. We'll just pull him away from the conversation, wearing his nice little hat. It's uh, Finn Rabin, the executive nice director. How are you? Yeah, good. Because tonight is an important moment for SMR and for the market research industry, right? You're going to launch... Tonight, we're going to launch the GMR, which is our annual report on the market. So, uh, you know, we update this every year and it shows our market to be growing again, which is a good sign for the All right, so already a, a, a little scoop. A little scoop, yes. Not that you didn't hear it first, but yes, it is growing again. So it's good news for all of us. Cool. Now, tomorrow, we will see you actually a lot more here at, uh, at Isamar TV. Tomorrow morning, we'll have a chat about the global market research. Yes. But um, can you tell us a little bit, what can people expect tomorrow afternoon when you're here? Well, tomorrow afternoon, what I'd like to do is just kind of switch the whole thing around a little bit. I mean, we've had a great time chatting to all kinds of people. Uh, I've been watching some of the interviews today. They've been fantastic, by the way. I hope you guys have enjoyed it, too. And tomorrow, we're just going to turn the tables on a few people and say, well, why don't they interview us and ask us for our opinions? So, uh, you know, we, we ought to do a bit of research, maybe, among some of those. Exactly. We're literally going to do an, an online brainstorm about the future type of content that you want to see either here on Isamar TV or at the next conference or the next events, right? So if you're watching right now, set your alarm for the same time, same place. No, not same thing. 24 hours later. <laughs> <laughs> same channel. Together with Finn. Hosted by you. Yes, indeed. All right, and uh, you can actually then input what else you want to see here. Very important moment. Thank you very much. Thank Enjoy tonight. All right, and with that, we're slowly moving back into our studio, I think. Um, the, the Channel 1 has started a long time ago, so perhaps you already left. And if you haven't, maybe you should do by now. Thank you very much for watching. We'll be back tomorrow morning about 9.20 uh, in the Irish time with Finn Robin. And uh, I hope you have a good night or a good day if you're in the States. See you back tomorrow.